This integral looks impossible. x to the fifth over 1 plus x squared. But there's a hidden structure here that makes everything click into place. The numerator has degree 5, the denominator degree 2. We can rewrite this using a clever factoring trick. Start with our fraction x to the fifth over x squared plus 1. Notice we can rewrite x to the fifth as x cubed times x squared. x cubed times x squared over x squared plus 1. Now here's the trick. Write x squared as x squared plus 1 minus 1. x cubed times the quantity x squared plus 1 minus 1 all over x squared plus 1. Distribute x cubed. x cubed times x squared plus 1 minus x cubed all over x squared plus 1. The first term has x squared plus 1 in both numerator and denominator. They cancel, leaving x cubed minus x cubed over x squared plus 1. Now repeat the same trick on this fraction. x cubed is x times x squared. x times the quantity x squared plus 1 minus 1. Expand and cancel. We get x cubed minus x plus x over x squared plus 1. The degree of the remainder is now less than the degree of the divisor, so we're done. We've expressed our original fraction as x cubed minus x plus a remainder term x over x squared plus 1. This is the key moment. We substitute this simplified expression back into our integral. What was once intimidating is now manageable. We can split this into separate pieces using the sum rule. The polynomial part and the fractional part can each be handled on their own. Two simpler integrals that we can actually work with. Let's tackle the polynomial part first. We can split this into the integral of x cubed and the integral of x. Both fall to the power rule immediately. The integral of x cubed is x to the fourth over four. The integral of x is x squared over 2. We evaluate both from 0 to 1, plugging in the bounds. At 1, we get 1 over 4. At 0, we get 0. Same pattern for the second term, 1 half minus 0. So we have 1 fourth minus 1 half, which gives negative 1 fourth. We'll hold on to this. Now for the second integral, the remainder term. This one calls for substitution. U substitution is essentially the chain rule in reverse. We introduce a new variable u as a function of x, transforming the integral into something more standard. We let u equal x squared plus 1, the denominator. Taking the differential, du equals 2x dx. We need x dx, so we solve for it. x dx is 1 half du. Making the substitution, we get 1 half times the integral of 1 over u du, a standard form. This is 1 half natural log of absolute value u, substituting back. 1 half natural log of absolute value x squared plus 1. Now, x squared is always non-negative, so x squared plus 1 is always positive. The absolute value bars are redundant. We can drop them. Applying the bounds from 0 to 1. At 1, we get 1 half natural log of 2. At 0, 1 half natural log of 1. Natural log of 1 is 0, so that term vanishes, leaving us with 1 half natural log of 2. Time to bring it all together. Adding the polynomial result, negative 1 fourth, to the remainder result, 1 half natural log of 2. 1 half natural log of 2. Minus one fourth. That's our answer. And that's it. What started as a complicated rational function became manageable through polynomial division and a clever substitution. If you found this helpful, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more mathematical explorations. Thanks for watching.